I feel like you you all had the intelligent conversation. <laughs> all I know is that I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start bootlegging. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Marvelous friends. Marvelous friends. Welcome to the Marvelous Friends podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Marvelous Friends podcast. This is comic book movie news. We have a lot to talk about. Come join us. It's gonna be a fun discussion. All right. So this week. A uh, new Guardians trailer came out, so Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, and yeah, so we'll we'll get into our thoughts on it. What do we think? The drums fell in love. Okay, and before we actually get into this, I just want to add in some some things here. So we all know that this is a James Gunn product. Um, and I I just want to, I mean, I don't, you guys can tell me what you think, but just to kind of add some things. Previously, James Gunn had mentioned that this was going to be, he hinted that certain things would happen with this Guardians group. Um, hint, hint that some may die or that, you know, that the new Guardians group would look totally different. So take that as you will. And I wanted to also just read a few things um, that he said about this movie. And this was uh, something that was on Entertainment Weekly. Uh, just a few uh, things from Gunn. And he says, one of the reasons why I came back to make this movie was because I felt like I needed to tell Rocket's story. Gun explains, I would have been very sad not to complete the trilogy for many reasons, but I just feel very connected to Rocket. I feel like nobody would tell, be able to tell his full story if it wasn't me. Uh, and then it says, to me, Rocket has always been the secret protagonist of the Guardians movies. From the beginning, it has been rooted in who he is as a character. I think he exemplifies a lot of the traits of all the Guardians. They've had all these traumas and it brings them together. I think that his is more extreme than others. So, you know, the article goes on, but I just wanted to read that because for, it kind of seems like the trailer is showing us, giving us one tone, but then when you come into articles about what Gunn plans to do and how the, how the, um, this final piece of this trilogy will go, it seems a little different. So any thoughts that you all have? And if this, and because it's James Gunn, if it compels you to think a little bit about DC in that direction, that's okay. But, you know, keep it brief. But anyways, what do y'all think? I think for me, I don't think about DC when I watch this movie because I feel like this is his, these are his characters that he started with a few years ago. Um, and to be honest, I feel like DC, there's a lot up in the air because we don't know what directors he's going to pick for his the, those projects. But I think with this movie, this is his baby. This is his baby that he's going to take to college, uh, if, if you follow the analogy. And so I feel like all these characters are fine. Are, are, it seems like they're going to reach some conclusion in terms of their arcs and what they're and who they are. Like, it's like they started in one place with the first movie and now they're in a different place and they're facing something that's going to really test them. At least that's my interpretation of this trailer. So I, I'm interested in this movie as an individual movie. But if you want me to talk about James Gunn as a whole, uh, that's, I don't know, I still have more question marks about him. As uh, But this movie, I think, is interesting and I want to see where these characters go. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, thanks for Rinaldi. Yeah, so you don't have to talk about DC, but be, if it compels you to think about what James Gunn might do with DC, then you can include it. I just wanted to. Well, I, felt, I felt I compelled. I felt compelled because yeah. you know okay. I don't want people to think I'm some James Gunn hater. Like I said, I, mm -hmm. I like what he's doing with these characters, and I want to see what what comes to fruition with right. this movie. I, however, feel compelled. Um, very <laughs> compelled. Um, so first, the trailer. I'm just going to say I'm not impressed with it. Um, it 
it gave me some of the story and i know that the trailer had one tone and at least what you just said um it sounds like that the movie has kind of a different tone um to it um but i just was not really impressed with this trailer this trailer didn't really show me anything um i can't help but wonder from this trailer and just seeing the trajectory of these you know guardians of the galaxy movies and just how the first guardians movie was so different and it stood out and it was its own thing and then every movie after seemed to try to be a copy of it and this seems to be an extreme i'm, I'm afraid that this is an extreme copy of the first one same thing with uh ant-man uh, we haven't seen quantum media yet but oh, okay. two was a copy of the first one it was a bad copy and i'm afraid that this is going to be a lot similar to it um movie wise i will also say that um drax uh dave batista does not look good in this movie um <laughs> he's put on some weight and uh yeah. i'm worried i'm worried for him drax um, always been i feel drax always felt like a weak link to me throughout this whole mm. like series of storylines for the, these characters right yeah, for me, it seems like a tone shift a little bit that they kind of masked with like really happy, bright music. Um, but I agree with you, Rob, like Drax looks pudgy, if I can say that. Um, and even Chris Pratt looks so different. I feel like he lost weight or something, but I don't know. I'm interested to see this movie. That's that's all I can say. I just feel like, yeah, I. it's not matching up with what, James Gunn is was saying to us previously the latter half of last year and as a matter of fact um, from the Entertainment Weekly uh, thing that I read there's actually uh, an older trailer posted there and that one actually seemed to have more of a serious tone there was still comedic parts but I don't know I'm, I'm not really sure what the purpose of releasing this type of trailer that seems to be more happy like Fergie said like I don't mm -hmm. I don't get why they didn't stick with that. Like, I don't know what they're trying to do, but I, I'll see what, what happens. And I feel like this matches up for James Gunn. You know, he, he feels like he sees himself in rocket. Like if you continue to read the article and I feel like that's what he's doing with DC. He's telling the stories he wants to, <laughs> um, you know, things like, again, no offense to booster gold, but as an example, <laughs> booster gold, like who was, who was thinking about him yeah. um so again i like booster gold i'm just saying you know so i feel you that those are my thoughts so we'll just see yeah seems like a lot of, he's passion projecting a lot of things and i'm just here so i'll jump in and transition us to the next set of news uh this is from the direct.com which i find myself finding news from this site kind of frequently <laughs> um <laughs> but uh basically it's a quote from kevin feige you know me i love when kevin feige has a quote and uh he's talking about um kind of a give, giving us a small picture of what to expect with spider-man 4 nothing obviously specific because they're still working on the film um but essentially what kevin feige said is that they have the story uh mapped out they did a whole outline for the story and they're working on the script but they finally figured out like you know act one act two and act three for this movie but now it's just typing it all out in a script and then having the cast read the script so i'll read the quote uh let's uh spider-man is going into the street level heroes or spider-man 4 so Spider-Man 4 is going to be kind of focused on street level stories that they've kind of teased throughout phase four, like, you know, Hawkeye and Echo. And then, you know, Daredevil Born Again is coming out. And the, apparently there's speculation that Punisher is going to be introduced in Spider-Man 4. Now, obviously, this is Kevin Feige hasn't said anything about Punisher, but he did specifically talk about street level heroes. And so there's all this speculation about Punisher and the fact that um, uh, John Bernthal has been in talks with Marvel and Disney and Kevin Feige in the past. So what are you guys thoughts are about this news? Okay. Wait, so just to, you said that 
the Punisher would be introduced into this Spider-Man four. They they would put that's that's the speculation the rumor. Okay, so my quick thoughts. So in general, that would be dope. But because it's Disney fied, what street street level where I'm I'm not. Well, because you have Echo, you got you know. Um, well, Kate Bishop, yeah. you got you know Daredevil, you know. Stuff yeah, like I know the characters, but I mean like whereas in like what's 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 really exciting or compelling about them the way that they've been presented so far or oh. you know how they will be presented because you know we didn't really see we saw glimpses of the new daredevil but when that series rolls out like what we don't know and um i just hope that john bernthal will continue to fight the good fight and be firm and be like i will not pull back <laughs> on my portrayal of this character i i I hope he does not waver so that we could get some real good street level. Content. Oh, Moon Knight. I completely forgot about that, that he might pop up in Spider-Man 4 as well. Oh, Moon Knight. Okay, see? So this is so we got some good characters, but it's like y'all need to really push it, push the maturity. That's yeah. all. I agree with you, Elise. I feel like this could easily be like Sesame Street level fighting. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, what's up? Because this could be great, but I'm losing so much confidence in Kevin Feige right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Big Bird. I, big Bird. <laughs> Dang. Um, Hawaiian shirts. I, I feel like, exactly. yeah, Hawaiian shirts for everyone. Um, is it is this Kevin Feige <laughs> or Oprah? Um, so I feel like we have to wait to see how Deadpool does to see what what lengths that Marvel and Disney is willing to go as far as rated R, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're introducing Punisher, that's that's like some deep level rated R. And yeah. how how Marvel and Disney handles uh, uh, Deadpool is going to be a it's going to directly tie into how they're going to handle any R rated character. Um, Daredevil's already being nerfed. Kingpin's already nerfed. Um, I, I just. I, I don't have any confidence in uh, if if Punisher were to show up. I also don't have confidence in Spider-Man 4. I think it's only going to be amazing because of all of these cameos. This sounds like mm. it would be better if it was a TV show. Yeah. yeah. And they need to stop using Spider-Man for cameos. I mean, No Way Home was great, but it mm. was very cameo filled. And it's just like, yeah, I think it would be good if Spider-Man could have like a it solid feels, thing right now. It feels Spider-Man is trying to focus specifically on New York because of what happened to Aunt May and that will get him involved in a conspiracy that would involve these other heroes. Like what if all these heroes were hypothetically investigating Kingpin and they all run into each other? Like, like Punisher's trying to murder Kingpin Echo has, you know, history with Kingpin, and then you got Daredevil with his own history with Kingpin, and now you got four people like wanting the same goal. You know, I don't know what you guys yeah. think of that. I mean, it's. I think. Sorry, I've been talking a lot. I think it's good, but give Spider Man. I, I don't know. I feel like Spider Man's lacking foundation a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, he doesn't really, this current Spider-Man doesn't really have villains like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I feel like it would be good to kind of solidify him as a character and then get other people kind of involved into it. But I just don't, I think he needs, he still needs to be on the process of character development and having that foe that he goes head to head with. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, you know, Elise, just real quick before we transition, um, you said exactly what I was just thinking. Is Spider First of all, Spider-Man No Way Home was very much a Spider-Man movie where you had different Spider-Man. It's still a Spider-Man movie. This doesn't... It, it's more New York street-level movie than it is a Spider-Man movie. If you turn it into a TV show, you can spread this out. But to your point, um, uh, what were you saying? You were talking about... Um, oh, Foundation. Um, Spider-Man 3, uh, No Way Home ended with the soft reboot and he was getting his own arc he has his own suit now he's becoming the peter parker that we know and before he's even established we're introducing all these street level heroes we're not getting the spider-man that they intended um this is going to be cameo heavy i feel like uh so speaking of spider-man uh you guys remember uh into the spider-verse right 
Yes, yes sir. Yeah, great uh, animated film. Amazing. Um, Amazing. Coming out another one uh, pretty soon. But with that, uh, Heroic Hollywood uh, posted, and this is this post was February 9th, um, a live action Spider-Man noir series is officially mm. in the works at Amazon. Uh, I cannot pronounce this guy's name, so I'm going to do my best. Oren Uziel, Uziel uh, will serve as the writer for Spider-Man noir series. The series will follow an old grizzled superhero who won't be a version of the Peter Parker that we know of. Uh, it will be set in New York City in the 1930s. Uh, Spider-Verse director Phil Lord and Christopher Miller will produce. And so uh, they also cite Variety as their immediate source. And so any thoughts on that? We're getting more Spider-Man, um, but this time an alternate version of Spider-Man uh, from the Spider-Verse. They, thoughts on that? They weren't going to ask um, Nicolas Cage to do that? That would have been dope. Yeah. You know you're on to something for yeah. I, I mean, know. but they That's also the don't say product. they don't they don't say an actor. Yeah, no actor. They don't they don't they don't they didn't cast anybody. You so, so I heard from a good source that Amazon is building their own spider oh. person streaming universe. Mm. So this is the beginning of a whole kind of universe or a series of alternate spider-man live action or animated series for amazon so let me understand this we have sony and their spider-man villain verse and yeah. then we got <laughs> amazon with their uh, other else world spider-man verse yeah and then we have marvel trying to figure out their own spider-man yes got it got it um but noir <laughs> But noir specifically is it has potential, but at the same time, I kind of I don't know. I feel like it would be it would have been cooler if this was like some kind of short film. I I don't know if I'm I have the energy to watch. I mean, if it was six episodes, I, that would be perfect. But I don't think I have energy to watch more than six episodes of this. And mm. I kind of want this to be a one off. Like yeah. I don't want this to be this ongoing thing because it just feels like the only thing it's the reason it's cool is we're seeing Spider-Man or at least the symbol of that hero in a different environment. But once you establish what that environment is, then there's not much you can do with the story. So I feel like length is my issue. I, I just six episodes, one season, call it a day. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It it could be a fun project, but the fact that this is now Amazon, and then you know, y'all mentioned okay, Sony got their whatever going on, and you know, it's just too much. <laughs> it's like I just want y'all to stop pimping out Spider Man. Just stop yeah, pimping what them they out. Doing, like, man. They, they keep trying to make money off this man. I'm just like, <laughs> let let it, no, please stop it. Just stop it. I, that's that's how I feel because y'all Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel mm -hmm. uh, superhero and I just want y'all to please respect my respect my boy please <laughs> that's all that's all I ask that's, that's all I can say I'm with you Elise <laughs> I mean Spider-Man was always my favorite Marvel hero and they're not even doing the stories that I want to see or hardcore Spider-Man's want to see like we yeah we're doing these weird kind of offshoot like Madam Web Spider Noir mm -hmm. like they just like can we get like the classic Spider like why don't you do stuff from the video game that was like a best-selling game on that was mm -hmm. on PS4 yeah do some stories off that you know or based off that or something I don't know like I don't know. This is weird. Uh, yeah. but we'll, see. we'll see how this specific show goes. Yeah. But even to do some of the stuff on the games, I think it goes back to my point before where Spider-Man needs to have some foundation somewhere. And then yeah. you can start expanding and talking about all this stuff. Because I think there was like, I mean, I haven't played played them, but I think um, the one before the Miles Morales one, I think they had people like uh, Silver Sable in there, like which isn't, yeah. you know, that's a deep like you got to be deep into Spider-Man to like know who that is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like you. But I'm but, but those, those but those characters are more well known than 
Spider Noir among like Spider Noir is popular because That's of that true. into the Spider Verse, not because of the comic books. Whereas Silver Sable, yeah. at least if you're a comic book head, you know I don't know. Well, can I ask this question? Um, mm -hmm. If if uh, Miles Morales is not really a public name, how then is the Spider Verse so successful? Because the, right? well, 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 the execution was good, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you mean yeah. by execution? Is it is it the story? Because you have the to watch story. the movie to see the story. And the style of right. animation, I think it was something fresh and different that we've never seen yeah. before. Right. And so I think, and I, I have no dog in this fight, to be honest, this is just news that I saw that I thought it was interesting. Um, mm. I think you can take any story and make it an amazing story. Um, you know, we're living right. in a, in a, in a generation where, uh, the guardians of the galaxy is like the best selling, one of the best selling movies out there. Oh no, no, Easy. I'm not. Fair. I'm not saying, I'm not saying Spider Noir is going to be bad. I actually am in, intrigued by it. What I'm saying yeah. is, this whole universe can't got just it. be Guardians. All that, like Marvel, doesn't yeah. have Guardians everywhere. They got Iron Man, they got Spider Man, they got more popular characters. Right. You know? Yeah. They don't <laughs> just they keep have looking at these. Characters. They keep trying to look into these other properties when they have a good solid yeah. foundation of heroes and characters that they can flush out before we explore. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right. So my news is a little bit different. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this, but AMC is super desperate. Um, they announced yep. on Friday that they're going to roll out tiered pricing. So that essentially makes like the good seats very expensive. Um, and so they had a press release, I think last Friday. And um, actually, AMC, AMC Stubbs members now, they can purchase tickets based on like the three different groupings of seating. Um, they have seats in the front row, which are considered value sightline seats, and they cost less. Um, seats in the middle are called preferred sightline and will cost more, obviously. And then the remaining seats are just standard sightline. And so it's just like, the standard price of admission. Um, and so essentially it's gonna be like concert seating. Like obviously if you sit where the good action is happen happening, um, you're gonna get a more expensive price versus if you're gonna be in the nosebleeds. Um, and so I know this isn't exactly comic book related, but I'm sure it'll have an effect on how we see movies going forward. So I was just curious on your thoughts and if you guys saw this or heard it at all. Look. Um, I already have back and neck problems. Um, <laughs> and you mean to tell me that with the amount of movies that are coming out now, last year and this year, Fergie, you can agree or disagree. We've seen more mo movies together between last year and this year than probably in the span of, of time that we've known each other. I think I could be wrong about yeah. that. No, um, right. wow. And every time we book tickets, we always try to find the middle row. Right. Yeah. If those yep. pri prices are already expensive, if those prices don't stay the same and they actually increase, I'm gonna have a lot of uh, skeletal issues um, <laughs> because I decided to, you know, not save money and sit in the very front row and arch my neck back so I can see what's happening in the top left corner. So I think, yeah, AMC is desperate. Um, yeah. I, but I also find it interesting that. I mean, out of all of the theater brands and the theater uh, companies, AMC is the one doing this. I, I don't hear any other companies really doing this. Um, Wait, what are the other major companies again? You got Showcase. Oh, yeah, Showcase. Um, <clears throat> what else you got? Um, I know here in Boston uh, we have Patriot Cinema, which is like There's Patriot local. Cinema. That's a local chain. Whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah. What IMAX? Other than Showcase? This Wait, where's, the, where's the place in what's the place in Fenway? What, what are they? That's Patriots. I think it's a, oh, it's Regal. That, Regal. It's Regal. Oh, that's Regal. Oh, Regal, Regal, Regal Cinema. Okay. Yeah. Is that I, a local? I forgot that, that was a thing. Is that a local? That might be too? local. Is it might be. That might be. Uh, it might be. I don't know. It might be local. It might be local. But I thought Marquis owned it. But, but I, I think could be wrong. but I think AMC is the one that comes to mind the quickest for me. Like yes, more yeah. than yeah. the other ones. I just find it interesting that. Out of all the popular ones, AMC is the one to roll something like this out first. I think they're going to change the game and make everybody else fall in line if this is successful. I think that's what's going on. They're trying to get ahead of the pack because they're a major yeah. theater uh, theater uh, company. So mm -hmm. 
they're trying to I, set the tone. I think they're also, and I'll stop sharing because I'm talking a lot here, but I also think potentially they might see uh, the end of movie theaters. And so they're trying mm -hmm. to pull in as much money as they can now while people are going to the movies um, at the height of it. Uh, because I think very soon streaming movies and paying for it in home is going to be a much more popular thing. We'll see that. I, um, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm done. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think movies, major movie chains are done. I think local chains will, will exist yep. and pivot to um, an event-based model. So like if you have a kid's mm. birthday party, y'all can rent out the whole theater mm. and because and um when i went to san francisco for the walking dead finale uh with um a podcast uh network it hosted event they rented out a theater for us to watch the finale oh, wow. and it's a company that hosts events they do bar mitzvahs they do wedding reception stuff and graduations and they just rent you just rent theater space to watch your favorite entertainment or film entertaining films so i'm wondering if local theater chains will go in that direction and then the the amc's ones will just fold and declare bankruptcy mm. Mm. i wonder then ronaldi on the flip side if then like disney is going to come out with their own chain of theaters or marvel oh, or God. dc I don't think it's gonna work because have a monopoly it, in that, but I, I don't know. I don't think because because it's really like a neighborhood type thing. So you they'd have to really kind of integrate themselves into whatever neighborhood that they start this in. Mm -hmm. Cause it's one of those like it's like a bowling alley. It's like, oh, let's go to Sam's bowling alley yeah. to have little Johnny's birthday party. <laughs> yeah. And I, and you know I, Sam. Sam is a guy that it lives in the neighborhood and you know it. Like Disney has to replicate that in order to Dude. Yeah, I, but the th I, don't, I don't. To Fergie's point, I think when you have uh, Big Mickey, um, uh, uh, I don't. I don't think they actually care about that stuff. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't, and I don't think you have to care about that yeah. stuff if you you can. Like Starbucks is everywhere. Yeah, they didn't integrate anywhere. It's the same. You walk into a Starbucks and you know it's a Starbucks. Um, I also they don't people have want coffee. Everything. People want coffee. I, I think people right, are but, tired but, of the but, movies. And just like how... They're tired just like of going how, to the well, movies. Hang on. Though. So oh, my fault. They, you're right. They, people are tired of going to the movies. But if I'm Disney, I've already bought Fox, right? So we can keep all the characters. Um, I've already worked out a universal deal. I've worked out a Sony deal. I, I want to monopolize everything. And so why not keep everything? They came out with Disney Plus. They want to keep everything in-house. Right. So why, do but, they, why would they want to spend money on a movie theater when they can just start building their own. I also think too, along with that, who's to say that they can't just pay local families or give them like um, franchising licenses to kind of open up their own like local mom and pop movie yeah. theater. And so it has that That's kind of franchise. environment. Feel. Yeah. yeah. And then kind of what Rob is saying, like, and you Rinaldi too, like just this local experience, like you mm. have your local bowling alley and mom and pop shop. So who knows? But Elise, what do you think about all this? I feel like you you all had the intelligent conversation. <laughs> all I know is that I'm gonna start I'm gonna start bootlegging. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm just gonna and and okay for Elise is the real street level hero. <laughs> okay, you know I mean like and you know I'm gonna I'm just gonna go on my bootlegging sites and for any cops that are viewing this, please these these do not reflect the thoughts of Rob Fergie or Rinaldi. So just come get me. <laughs> If, if y'all need to get me for this crime, but I'm going to start bootlegging. This is just not, I'm not paying that much. Y'all already got me paying like 16 bucks for the, 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 the popcorn drink and oh, like girl. whatever combo. Like, no, mm -hmm. I, no, I'm sorry. You got to take out a and personal you, loan to buy yeah, movie theater popcorn. I, I got to write my name in hey. blood for the, for the, for the middle seats now. No, no, no. Parents, I'm, I'm, parents I'm bootlegging. I'm bootlegging. Parents are looking at the bear, like the Eminem, like oh, lose yourself God. video. <laughs> if like I you only got my... one shot to make your kids oh, and your God. wife happy. So you got to take them to the movies. Nah. <laughs> I'm gonna build I'm a I'm gonna build a home theater and I'm gonna get me a nice big projector and 
bootleg <laughs> nice and wow. nice on one find a get a vpn and bootleg it <laughs> <laughs> she said she okay, said a... <laughs> she said forget the movie going experience i don't need 4d 4k surround sound dolby i don't need any of that give me a movie where shadows are walking across the screen and yeah. somebody's talking <laughs> no, over it's gonna be no, 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 no. It's gonna be the good sites, Rob. I'm gonna find the premium bootleg oh, sites. All right, there's a premium. There's and premium then... sites. It's premium. All sites. I know is that hey. Nicole Kidman is about to be out of a job, so start oh, looking for jobs. Oh my gosh! All right, no. <laughs> she'll be fine. Ooh. She'll be fine. She got that eight mile money. Ah, oh, yeah. eight mile. Eight Wasn't mile. she Eminem's mom in eight mile? Or was that someone else? Nicole Kidman. Oh. Wait, was she? No, no, no. Was that some other was one? She? Wait, nah, you when oh, wait, 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 wait. no, dude, that checked out on no, 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 no. I mean, she was Aquaman's mom, yeah, she was Aquaman's mom. Wait, I'm gonna double check, yeah, let's 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 look at that fact check. <laughs> no, it's Kim Bassinger. Yes, that's why I said. Look, I said not Kim, not I said, all white people Kim. look the same, Rinaldi. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, ooh. I'm sorry, man. Like, and she looks nothing like. Nicole I, Kidman, I confused, like at all. I just confused. And Nicole Kidman, she's interesting looking, but she doesn't look like that. <laughs> I Sorry. knew it was Kim. Yeah, I was White, like, I said her name. Hair, and I was like, it, it just, it's just like, it's just, a, it's just fuzzy. No, they, no it's fuzzy. No, no, no. no, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Awesome. They look like they could be related, though, in his defense. No, but... no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> Not all they, white people. If, the same. I no, thought no, Michelle I didn't say, I didn't was say that. One time, I thought she was Nicole oh, Kidman. Oh no! I thought the Cole Kidman was an Ant Man. No, no, no! <laughs> I'm not saying they look. I'm just saying, look, yo, if you found out that they were cousins, though, tell me, yeah. Kim and Nicole, if they was, if you, you, if they said, oh yeah, we're cousins, that's believable. I'm not saying they look alike. <laughs> so at least alike, you but finally, you know. finally got my full, my whole back. You got 100 percent of it now. I did. All right, and so that was the news. Uh, a lot of interesting topics, including Nicole Kidman and Kim Bassinger, but there was also some superhero news. Thank you for joining us, and continue to look out for more comic book movie news on this YouTube channel. Cops that are viewing this, please, these, these do not reflect the thoughts of Rob Fergie or Rinaldi, so just come get me. <laughs>